check out the second channel pop off let me too because there's much much new content there much wow content oh doge me you are so amazing ah a huge thanks to my patreon supporters for making this episode possible good morning fellow mathematicians when you come back to our video Today we are going to take a look at something absolutely fantastic. This is seriously a great trigonometric question. What's the cosine of pi over 5? And this is only like a prerequisite video for something that we are going to do on Friday. A subscriber sent me an email this morning with an extreme trigonometric question. That's probably going to be the title of the video on Friday. Extreme trick question, something like this. It's going to be hella amazing. The video on Friday is going to be an absolute bomb. I, I know it. And, and this thing right here is, is, is only part of the question and, and it's so exciting. I can't wait to cover this on, on Friday. So I hope you are going to tune in. Up until then, we are going to deal with this and it's going to yield such a crazy nice value. It's, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. I can't stop smiling because this morning I did one and a half hours of this question and I was able to solve it and, and this popped up. I had to calculate it and it's so fantastic, seriously. Let us dive right in. We are going to start with something completely different at this point. We are going to start off with the question what the sine of pi over 5 is. So sine of pi over 5. Hey, that's actually a readable sign. That's an N. This is an N. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. There's an N, not a little Arabic thing. So sine of pi over 5 is nothing but, we are going to rewrite it as the sine of some angle 5, for example. I don't care what you call it. Okay, sine of phi. Hmm. On the interval from 0 to pi over 2, sine is injective, meaning pi over 5 is equal to phi. This is what it implies, all right? So pi over 5 is equal to phi. Now we are going to do some manipulations. So pi is does nothing but, pi is nothing but, well, um, 5 times phi, okay? I hope you agree with me. This is just what it is. And now, well, we are going to split this up a tiny little bit. I would like to make use of the double angle formula for the sign, just because it's so easy to handle. The double angle formula for the sign is, is going to give you a nice product of things, whereas the double angle formula for the cosine is going to give you in addition with square. So this is kind of a weird thing. This is why I would like to trace back everything to the sign here. We are going to split this up. Phi phi is nothing but three phi plus two phi. Okay, it's just some playing around at this point. And now we are going to subtract, it really doesn't matter, two phi on both sides, leaving us with pi minus two phi is equal to three times phi. Now we are going to plug everything back into here. So, uh, no, we are not going to plug it in, into here. I'm terribly sorry, we are just going to use the sine on both sides. Okay, so the sine of pi minus two phi is thus equal to the sine of three phi. I'm terribly sorry for the confusion. I wanted to just apply the sine on both sides here. Now, what is the sine of pi minus two phi? It's actually something nice. If you take a look at the graph for the sine, oh, that's my play button. Oh, hello, kitty caddies, my boys and girls out there. They are everywhere, kitty caddies everywhere. Can't believe it. If you take a look at the sine, okay, sine looks something like this. And there we have um, zero, pi over two and pi, exactly. So what we have here is that the sine of pi is actually nothing. So, so if we were to shift the sine wave, pi units to the right, okay? This is just what we mean by, by adding a pi in the argument here. If we just shifted one unit to the side, it's going to be um, this thing here. So what we have here, this new wave is just negative the sign of what we had originally. With the same argument that we have here, except with the pi, we are going to get rid of this. So that's equivalent to saying that we have negative the sign of negative two phi being equal to the sign of three times phi. And now the only thing left to do is to notice that our sign is an odd function, meaning sign of negative something is negative the sign of something. So we can just bring the negative to the outside, turning this into a positive sign, okay? 
So we have that the sine of two times pi over phi, five is nothing but the sine of three times pi over five. It makes perfect sense if you just take a look at the unit circle, for example. Now, like I mentioned before, we are going to make use of the double angle formula now for the sine. So the sine of two phi is going to be two times the sine of phi times the cosine of phi. Mm, and now we have sine of three times phi. I mean, there's probably a triple angle formula that I don't know about. We are just going to make use of addition formulas for the sine here. Because sine of three times phi is nothing but sine of two times phi plus phi, meaning we have the addition of two things. And we know, I have made a video on that before, I believe, to, to, together with Sam from, from Wattactagon, what link will be down there at the top of the description. We use the complex numbers in matrix form to derive those addition formulae. It's pretty amazing. So the sine of a plus b is nothing but, let me think, um, this is, yeah, um, I'm always deriving those in my head yet again because it's way easier than, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really easy to derive those. I'm using the matrices in my head and then I'm going to multiply everything. It's going to be the sine of A times the cosine of B plus the sine of B times the cosine of A. Okay, it's kind of nice. It's a nice formula that we have here. Meaning overall, this is equal to, um, I'm going to put it down here. So the sine of A, it really doesn't matter what A and B are because we have this positive sign into here and this just commutes under addition nicely. So we have the sine of two times phi times the cosine of phi plus the sine of phi times the cosine of two phi. And that's what we have at the moment. Two times sine cosine phi is equal to this addition formula. Now you might notice that sine of phi is not equal to zero. I mean, it is not equal to zero because um, pi over five is somewhere, I don't know, here. So it's not equal to zero if you take a look at the graph. Okay, proof by graph that we have here. Meaning we can divide both sides by sine of phi, leaving us with, if we just, divide both sides by it. We are going to get two times the cosine of phi. It's thus nothing but. Okay, um, let me see. Are we going to divide by the sine or the cosine? I don't care. Um, we are going to divide by the sine. Yeah, this is better at this point. We are going to have um, sine of two phi times the cosine of phi over the sine of phi, this is going to simplify quite nicely in a second, plus, well, sine of phi and sine of phi are going to cancel out to just cosine of two phi, plus the cosine of two phi. Hey, that actually looks a bit better because sine of two phi is nothing but two times sine of phi cosine of phi. Sine of phi is going to cancel out so many phi's, fees whatsoever is here. So we are going to have two times the cosine of phi is thus equal to two times the cosine squared of phi at this point, plus cosine of two phi, there's an addition formula for that. Cosine of two a is nothing but cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a, meaning this is the um, cosine squared of phi minus sine squared of phi. Isn't it absolutely amazing? That's a real um, trigonometric extravaganza that we are having here. Now we might notice that sine squared of phi is nothing but one minus cosine squared of phi, leaving us with, okay, two times cosine of phi. This is going to stay where it is. Being equal to, um, now let me see, this is going to be to, two times cosine squared of phi plus two times cosine squared of phi minus one. There we go. This is going to give us overall four times the cosine squared of phi, so this is two times cosine of phi. And then being equal to four times the cosine squared of phi minus one. Now you might notice something. This is just a quadratic equation in our cosine. If we just say that cosine of phi is nothing but x, for example, and then divide both sides by four, bring some stuff to the other side. You might notice that we now have, okay, let me see. We are going to have x squared minus Two over four is going to be one half, minus one half times x in this case, that's the cosine of phi. And then we are going to have negative one quarter is 
equal to zero. Now, that's a nice quadratic that we are having here, and, and we can easily solve it using the Pehu formula, Arbit C formula, quadratic formula. I don't know. So, the formula for the solutions of quadratic equations. So, x1 and 2 is nothing but two values of the cosine of phi. Okay, this is the cosine of phi, is cosine of pi over 5. There was a fly um, right in front of my face. That's kind of annoying. So, this is going to give us um, one quarter plus or minus the square root of 1 16th and then plus 1 quarter. 1 quarter, we can just expand it by 4 over 4, giving us 5 over 16. Square root of 16 is going to give us 4, meaning this is 1 plus the square root of 5 times 1 quarter. And this is nice, all right? So we have um, plus minus here. We have that the two values of the cosine are actually nothing but 1 plus or minus square root of 5 over 4. Thing is, it can't be the negative branch just because cosine of pi over 5, cosine, if we were to put this into another coordinate system, I'm terribly sorry about the mess here, if we put this into another coordinate system, so this is pi over 2, pi over 5 is less than pi over 2, it's somewhere here, I don't care, meaning it's the positive branch of our solutions that we are going to have, meaning the cosine of phi is thus nothing but the cosine of pi over 5. Whew, that's a lot of thinking that we have to do here and the video on Friday is going to be even harder. Not really hard, it's just a lot of um, elementary computations here. And this is going to give us 1 plus the square root of 5 over 4. But 4 is nothing but 2 times 2. So we are going to do this 2 times 1 half. 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Oh, we know this one. It's the golden ratio of phi over 2. And this is why I have used phi in the first place, just to give you a little spoiler that those two are actually connected. Maybe that's going to be a spoiler in the title too. So the cosine of pi over 5 is, oh my goodness, it's the golden ratio over 2. Isn't that absolutely amazing? This is absolutely amazing if you ask me. And I think that's an absolutely cool result. This is why I want to cover it in a separate video. And also because the video on Friday would be just way too long if I would cover everything in one video. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, recommend, channel. If you want to support the channel a bit more, buy those teachers I create. Also support the channel on Patreon. Check out the second channel, Pop Off Lemmy 2, because there's much, much new content there. Much wow content. Oh, don't me. You are so amazing and what else can I say I hope you enjoyed this video share it around everywhere such that the channel gets a few more subscribers all right now until the next video I wish you guys a flamble day ciao this film machine videos is a lummel up